someone tell him he's muted so he's not talking to himself because i did that one podcast uh, i was trying to like ask a question to someone and i wasn't muted in, <laughs> in the discord but i was um i was muted in the in the actual like Shit. podcast audio so yeah. i um <laughs> it was bad i'm like oh this is tough <laughs> it's tough to watch so yeah, i remember doing fucking like back in the day, man. Like I'm old. Uh, back in the podcast days, you know. <laughs> nah, I remember like doing like three, four hour streams, like without even knowing I'm muted. And I go back. Oh, to dude. Like, what the fuck, dude? I didn't talk. I was talking to no one. I mean, I really was talking to no one. But <laughs> <laughs> we all been there, brother. But even if someone was there, they wouldn't have heard me. You know. Yeah, dude. That's that's tough, dude. That's one of the hardest things I think. Like when you're starting off. Is just learning how to talk, like, yeah. Because people, people ask me this every single day. I swear, what what do I do to grow on Twitch, or what do you have for tips and stuff? And I tell people, learn to talk to yourself because that'll save you in the long run. I think because if you learn to talk yeah. to yourself, dude, it's game changing. I think. I just, uh, I mean, I just fired up the old stream for the first time in like a month, maybe yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. Even then, I was having trouble. I was like, "Man, I feel so weird talking to myself now." Like, it just like you get out of the groove, and it's. Oh yeah, I mean, if you do something or you don't do something for so long, it's obviously gonna be, you know, a little strange. That's like not playing an FPS game for, what, yeah. you know, couple couple days or whatnot. It happens. So, ladies and gentlemen. Starting off this podcast, we have a very, very special guest of ours, a, uh, a close friend of me and Ryan's. Um, everybody, warm, warm welcome for young Dave, Boys. aka, How we doing? aka Pobra, aka the new, new and impro improved Dirty Dave, <laughs> aka the fishing god now, oh, <laughs> aka catching lunkers there. on stream all day there. long. <laughs> David, how you doing, brother? What's good? All right. All right. Doing all right. Playing a lot of WoW lately. Heck yeah, man. A lot of WoW. So we haven't had a guest on the podcast in quite some time. And usually uh, for our guests, we just have like a couple start off questions and we like to revolve it around gaming and just uh, your gaming history and stuff like that. So let's wind it back to young David. What, what did he start off? What got him into gaming? And <laughs> tell tell us a little it. bit about yourself. <laughs> no, tell, not even. I remember. <laughs> no, pre-Ryan. Pre Ryan Pat, video games. Pat is the one that really got me into video games. I All right, guess. so go into depth a little my bit. Tell cousin, us about your yeah, little gaming history, Nicky man. Pat. So they would always be playing Diablo. Okay. We've been playing that a shit ton lately, which is pretty fun. But um, I I just saw them playing, and Pat used to be the biggest asshole to me when I was growing up. So he never used to let me play games. So you know, it's that one thing that you want so bad mm, that you can't yeah. get. So once I finally had it, boy, I went strong. <laughs> <laughs> and here yeah. we are. <laughs> and here we are, dude. Nice. And so Diablo was like your your main your main thing for a little bit. Diablo was like what got me like excited about like gaming, I guess. But then they started playing Counter Strike, which Ooh. I was like. All so right. did you play CS on the PC or did you play on the uh, Xbox? I did. My cousin did. I played uh, on Xbox. I never got to play because, that's like I said. Tough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he so, was a cranky uh, kid. Yeah, <laughs> why did you end up playing Diablo on PC? It was well, I just started playing like three years oh, ago. Okay, really, okay. I just no, it was just like the first thing that like got me excited, like wanting to play games. Hmm. You guys on two different monitors, I got to figure out which one I'm looking at. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you recently got into gaming? You haven't like always been into it? I mean, since like what? really like pretty consistent since probably like sophomore year high school i would say sophomore okay. year yeah. sophomore year yeah. yeah i'm 24 now so okay, okay. so it's been a minute basically really this is this About is the story of david meeting call of duty for the oh first. so when so, true addiction sets in <laughs> i never yeah. played it things, I, things I didn't, got heated yeah i didn't play mw2 that much um and one summer i had david over and i was and i was like oh <laughs> hey uh my brother has this call of duty game and i've never played it we, let's check it out so uh we just took turns playing it or whatever and then i swear to you two weeks straight david was over my house <laughs> 
destroying people in MW2. The needle and he, was in, dude. dude he was, oh he my leveled God. up so I much so fast. It was fucking nuts. But then he got his first Xbox 360. Ooh. We were over at David's house and his mom, she, she basically made it seem like she wasn't getting him an Xbox. And then randomly on his kitchen table was an Xbox. And I was like, I know what's in there. Or this big box. And I was like, I know exactly what's in there. So it, he got, uh, I think he got Black Ops 1 with it. And yeah. we, we literally went into his living room, both set up our Xboxes and just destroyed kid. First game on him and We're I like both got like black birds. Yeah, we, we just annihilated everybody. We are fucking nuts. It was great. But uh, yeah. I remember that clear as day. Actually, I forgot. Man, this is bringing back so much stuff. That's not even the beginning of it, too. Oh, I mean, what, rewind it way my back cousin, then. Cousin's Pat, he is the beginning. But, like, after that, um, Alex, our buddy Alex, actually had an Xbox. And, like, I barely hung out with this kid. And, like, the second time he was over, he left his Xbox at my house for, like, three and a half months straight. Oh, I remember that, yeah. And yeah. I prestiged him seven times in modern warfare 2 who Maybe. just first of all who just leaves their <laughs> xbox at someone else's house with xbox yeah, live and know. everything mm -hmm. oh my god parents were paying for it man heck yeah dude you're not gonna waste that potential this man's grinding Mom and dad's credit card i was like <laughs> i asked him every day at school i was like you want that thing i was like i'll bring it in he's like no nah, i don't want it on the bus it's like next time we chill it's like <laughs> three months i'm like all right all right dude say no more <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, so Call of Duty really set it off for you. Then that was kind of like the yeah. the changing of gears. Then and then from then on out, it's just kind of kind of been yep. a whatever. Huh? Had to I guess WoW next after that. Yeah, I was about to say because you okay. This is a pretty WoW, wow podcast, and we talk about WoW a lot. So how did how did you get into World of Warcraft? Because you played. From My what man's I remember, right here. yeah. So Ryan got you into it, but oh, how, yeah. how did that Ryan go down? I want to know what went down because World of Warcraft back in the day. I mean, that's fifteen dollars a month. That's a lot of money to a young chap. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So I need to know the details of what's going on here. How how did I you was maintain that? Graced by the gods of Brett, <laughs> who let me play on his account. That's Ryan's brother. Who don't people who don't know? <laughs> um, he let me play on his account. Like every time I was over their house and he wasn't playing on it what a guy i was over ryan's house every weekend <laughs> then <laughs> on the summer i remember i think i was there like three straight weeks with coming home like for an once, hour or two just to for, get like new get new clothes something. i was yeah. like all right it's like let's swap it out freshen yeah. up yeah because yeah, david so and i we only that. live like five minutes of walking distance away from each other so he he could go Actually, right through the woods. Yep, back. I was just about to say, yeah, Cut or the ride our bikes or whatever. Heck yeah, brother! <laughs> Dude, we used to take the bikes through there. Everything. Yep. Um, but yeah, so at first, so I got a laptop. I got an Alienware laptop, and uh, it was during Wrath of the Lich King when I got it. And David would play on it sometimes, and so would. And we, we would just like swap off. David would play on my Death Knight while I'd play on my Xbox or something like that. We would just swap off. Nice. And I'll I'll never forget because David got me the best in slot two handed X. <laughs> Don't remember that. It was Freaking from Tyrannical uh, Pit of, Beheader. Pit of Saron. It's called uh, Tyrannical Beheader. And he was Drops like, oh, shit, I, got it. I remember that <laughs> axe. <to laughs> I know, thing. me too. Yeah. So uh, he got a really good axe. And then my brother re enabled his account. And then my brother got a gaming PC. Oof. So then uh, David would play on his account and David played on his death night. And um, so David got like one of the best two handed weapons for uh, my brother's character, too. <laughs> so it was just funny. Um, and then I think you ended up getting an account in Kata. I think, I think you got your no, own. No, it was actually Wrath of the Lich King. Like during that time, I got a laptop like I think for my birthday or christmas or something like that yeah and then i got an account and then things start to ascend <laughs> <laughs> i got my first level 80 his name was patron o death <laughs> it was 
terrible. Death Knight, I was so hyped about playing him because Ryan's brother had the first Death Knight of the group to hit max level, and I was like, all right, this thing is amazing. I got to do this. And so I start messing around, learning the game a little bit, and I find out you can get under Stormwind this certain way. So <laughs> I, I start doing that, and I start dueling people down there pretty regularly. And um, one day, like, get this virus scan on my computer. Boom, boom. Keylogger. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I forget what it said. It said, like, malware or something like that. But that's what it equated to. And got my account stolen from me. Aww. He did a bunch of stuff in game. Got all my stuff. Probably sent it to himself. And then got me banned. Never got the account back. Stopped for couple of years <laughs> i yeah. was like man Dang. i think it was right no i didn't go, I, I I didn't go right it back a into it years to be honest i think you got a new account almost I, uh probably a couple because we played it wasn't and, instantly i know that but we played kata a lot remember so it between mm-hmm. wrath and kata we did play a bit of kata yeah we played 2v2 shoddy more. memory <laughs> Dang, so you got your, so the passion starts hitting, you know, peaking high, and then you're battling under storm one at a time in your so life, pissed. and you get, you get I just so yoinked from a hacker, happened. dude. I remember. That's gotta remember be the most that. devastating feeling as a kid. I, w- I Dude, I don't know if I would have played again. I probably would have quit. That would have been it for me, If man. I didn't have Ryan playing, I wouldn't have. I'd oh, no man. Way. All no. that time spent on that account, too, probably. Oh. Yeah, dude, we, never, we uh, would call literally. Call or nothing? Like, no, I mean, I put in emails and stuff, and yeah. like they're like, they listed all the things that like the account got flagged for, and they're like, But you did this and this. I was like, I'm dueling people under Stormwind. She's like, Doesn't matter. <laughs> so fucking dumb. I hated and that. I was shit, like, but... What, 13 at the time? I wasn't dealing with it. I was like, Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> That's a that's a Pepe hand story right there. That's sad. But the grind didn't stop there. So you got your you got a new account and then oh, went right back um, into it. Yeah, and then I actually started raiding a bit. Was it Kata? No, you raided I didn't uh, raid Kata. maybe end of Kata, but you raided the most in Mr. Pandaria. Pandaria was my shit. He was like because one of the top ranking hunters on the server. I started getting into it. And I realized I can't mythic raid on a piece of crap laptop. And then the PC was born because Ryan's brother had one at the time. <laughs> Ryan's brother plays a big and... role in this story. <laughs> <laughs> he <Yeah>. does. <laughs> like but I said, I got him, him, dude. dude. We got him. He on let the me podcast. play on his PC. <laughs> I ended up buying his PC from him. To, like it, it was beefy at the time. It was. It really. I was, was. running WoW at Ultra for a couple hundred frames. Nice. Like, it was good. <laughs> and that was a massive upgrade from low in 25 frames. Oh so. my gosh. I forgot how bad PCs were back it then. Was, well, Everyone was playing on laptops. laptops. Over there, yeah. dude. It's just I still laptops. got WoW installed on it. Yeah, I, I, I have an Alienware. I bought that thing for 1100 bucks, and I wish I could go back and never have bought that. I would have bought a desktop I for 700 I think I spent like... 250 on the laptop so you know what it was yeah <laughs> it was not good you, yeah. do you like slideshows oh <laughs> yeah he made it work though i mean at that time we didn't give a shit we were playing wow we were happy <laughs> heck yeah i wish times could go or i wish we could go back to those times where we would just you could just play games and just enjoy a man straight up you know what i mean Everything's got to either be a competition now, or it's got to be compared to another video game. It's just silly, in my opinion, man. What happened? <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel like I just either, like, either I'm getting old and everything sucks, or just everything sucks. <laughs> you know, it's like weird. I don't want to say it's me, but it could be. But I don't. Think I don't it's know, me. man. To I be... think it's also due to the times we're living in. Holy yeah. fuck! Right. Strange times. Yeah. Um, but one other thing I wanted to add about that whole story was, um, so I think, I think the best way to put it was like, uh, yeah, like wow, got, when it comes to gaming, wow played probably the biggest role in 
in my life for damn sure when it comes to gaming, whether it's time played or, you know, like efforts put towards, I mean, we, it was just, it, it's crazy how, where WoW was back then to where it is now and how it's still relevant. And I think it's the only, only game besides old school RuneScape that's still kicking, you know? Like well, well at least for that genre, one hundred percent, dude. Like, it's just crazy to me. And now, it, I mean, if you guys want to dip into it really quick, there was a dueling tournament today. I don't know if you guys saw. I but saw Soda popping at a ninety-eight thousand yeah. viewers, and I was if, like, if "What is happening?" Get this amount of viewage in the beta, almost a month in. Just imagine when everyone hits max level. Imagine the amount of people. That's what I'm trying to wrap grasp yeah. like my mind around yeah, because yeah. there's this many it's people popular. in in the in like the beta and the stress test servers and you you like go to it. I was just farming uh boars. I was farming boars the other day just cuz I needed to level up. And there was people all over the place doing the same thing I was doing. These guys were like max level just farming for for some reason and they were helping me and and stuff like that. But what other game are you going to find that in, dude? Just yeah, literally, I would go to any place of the map it, that I didn't discover there was someone there. It was crazy. Yeah, I was watching. Uh, so that's what I was doing earlier. Uh, he hit a new viewer peak just of people watching his perspective through the tournament because he ended up losing out. But he had like a, I think like 123k viewers. <sighs> like, really? Um, just him and like, and he's not even hosting the tournament. Like someone else was. So, but I mean, that's Tip his own viewership. Yeah. So mm -hmm. does a massive streamer himself. Probably one of the like top zero zero two percent fucking of people to ever exist in the platform, you know? Yeah. That's but just that being wild, said, dude. like just the hype around it is so massive that um like so many people trying to get in the beta and so many people wanting to play that game. But I mean I think it'll definitely fall off like for a good matter. Like I don't think all those people that are watching, like they all might all play it, but I don't think they're all gonna hit max level. And even then, I think the only content will only last so long. It's they gotta do, they gotta think of something to, to right. do towards the end game of that. Because I mean, if you think about it, it's all stuff people already done. Like even myself, I've already done most of that content. You know, like I just don't. I mean, like the raids and stuff. People always talk about that. The raids and the you know the dungeons or whatever. People are gonna beat those like the day of a lot. A lot of like hardcore players. So I don't know what people are gonna expect in terms of uh content or for content wise the longevity of it i mean for new players such as myself maybe getting into it they'll be a little different but mm -hmm. it, i mean it'll still be fun i think it's just gonna be it's gonna be different obviously this time around for sure yeah i think you might be surprised how hard things might be actually you think so it's they just were just moment. pushing for scarlet monastery like it was molten core did you see that Asmin Gold and uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Soda? But, but they're kind of capped at level mean, thirty right now, so it's like I guess. And, and like, so what the, is uh, Scarlet Monastery? Uh, well, there's like different like, sections of it, so it can go through like yeah. through thirty to yeah, sure. about forty-ish, like the cathedral is yeah. one of the harder versions. So I I've been I see it all over Twitter and YouTube and Twitch. Um, the topic of Classic WoW and how longevity is going to be a big issue and like I said before, the the thing that's going to really, that's kept WoW well around first off for so long and what will continue is the community building inside of it. Because if you see Asmongold streaming Classic WoW and Soda Pop and, and everybody else for the next who even knows how long, I mean, it's that alone will bring a huge audience of people that are going to want to play. And then on top of that, the different events people are going to come up with this event today was a turn uh dual tournament people are going to be doing dual tournaments till who knows how when like every single weekend probably i mean people could do it for money even and uh another thing is um the uh grand marshal and uh warlord i think high warlord, high warlord yeah um, that grind is going to be super hype too, because that's that's literally like sixteen hours a day every day for like months <sighs> of grinding, and people are going to be going for that, and that's just fucking nuts to me. But all of that included with the raids, uh, obviously the raids are going to be honestly 
it's going to be a cakewalk. It's not going to be, there's going to be no one not finishing it the first week. It's going to get done first two days, even for you most think of the so race. Will? I think so for like the people who are like mid maxing, you know, method players and stuff. Just, yeah, like they, sure. they'll finish it. I mean, probably I'm, first I'm still week. thinking like it takes Upon time release, to get the gear like, just like, to, uh, to do that. So, you know, because the they're going between... straight from leveling into straight doing that because they can't do all that in one no day. no so um <laughs> the raid i'm not sure when it's actually set to release molten core um but there's the dungeons like uh skull amounts and all that that people are going to be doing for like pre best in slot or best in slot gear pre-raid for a couple weeks at least yeah i mean that I that's going to be that's basically going to be the f- big grind is the dungeon grind and hope that you get good RNG with drops and stuff. After that, when it, when it comes to the raids, I mean, people are doing like, they're literally choosing selected classes to bring to the raid, which I know I'm not going to fucking do that because I'm just trying to have some fun. But um, yeah, that's, I expect first week, a lot of people are going to finish that raid really mm-hmm. fast. Just I guess I'm forgetting it's... how well, fast like it, the leveling is like in current WoW versus yeah uh, <laughs> classic WoW. Like you have so much more time to run those dungeons, I guess, in classic than you do That's in true. current. Yeah. Also, um, the just because people know what to expect, and I think this is this is something that a lot of people have talked about. Even Asmongold thought it was a good idea too. Was um, after all the content of classic has come out all the raids um all the bgs whatever um what do you guys think is a better play or could be a combined play where they either add burning crusade and make it so you can transfer your characters over or they add on to classic with more content i i think they should go the Whether runescape approach man Straight Whether up. Whether that's um, adding a more difficult raid boss into each raid, whether that's making a heroic mode for each raid. Um, because the big question is how many people are actually going to want those things and how many people are just going to want it to stay the same forever. Because there's a lot of people who literally do not want anything to change. And I think that's stupid. I think. It's dangerous because it's gonna make people die, like not want to fucking play pretty early on, if uh, there's nothing to look forward to that's new. And I, I don't see the danger in it after the content has already been out for so long. Right. I, I I'd see... prefer to see a server that you can copy your sixty over, place it. You can level from sixty to seventy on that BC server because I loved BC too. Like I did play a little bit of that, on, like at your house. <laughs> So that was fun. You can I mean, have yeah, different uh, options, right? Like the whole RuneScape told, like, thing. It, it really should be a bunch of options like that as well, mm-hmm. because uh, I mean, BC and Wrath were probably the best times of WoW. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm not hating on vanilla. Vanilla is fun as hell, and, and so, but like, there's just so many small things that like we're like, okay, cool, this is fucking stupid, you know? Like, like, yeah, I mean, you'll get to there, and you'll be like, okay, why, why am I doing that? Like, so okay, but uh, in BC, there's a lot of like more balance changes a little bit more competitiveness with the arena uh just gear thing it still kind of had that classic feeling like you know like it was still a massive game and a massive world but uh there's definitely some other things that some people want to keep just basic vanilla the hashtag no changes mm-hmm. like some people want to just relive that nostalgia and have it that grindy stupidly hard which i don't i mean i don't really know what stance to take to tell you the truth there's things in BC I'd want, and there's also things in Villa I'd rather keep. But, I think um, that there should just be options, like you were saying. Because I know RuneScape, for for a fact, has... Whether it's, like, an option for the community to, like, put in things that they want in the game. And then there's, mm-hmm. like, old-school RuneScape, if I'm correct. Um, they have just different options for people that want to play the game differently. I think that would be the best route to take, for me personally. Mm-hmm. That way... And, you know, you have options at the end of the day, then you don't have to necessarily be locked into one thing because there's some people that aren't going to want to play, you know, expansions and just want to grind vanilla. But then there's also going to be people that want to, like Dave was saying, transfer a tune over and kind of just keep going. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah and that's but, um that whole uh what the fuck was i gonna say um Oh, the old school RuneScape. So they have like a polling system where if you have an active account, you can vote on mm -hmm. um, something being added or not. Um, and if I, why not add it for WoW? Why, they, why not test that on retail right now? Right. And then apply it to classic later on. I think that's why a not brilliant see idea. How it works? I mean, BFA is, is fun for me personally because I like doing PvP in dungeons right now but i the systems within the game right now are very bad i i can definitely see why people are frustrated with the current state of wow because i mean it's it's fun for me but i could see why it'd, be, it'd suck for other people um but why not have the community finally be able to choose they listened for people who wanted classic now let's listen for the future past classic let's let's look at um if people want more content added to classic or just new servers or both like have those options available to people the the thing is is um i don't know how big of a team they have for classic mm. um the the question always comes down to will they have the um ability to run all of these things at once classic servers right um bc servers and the new added content on top of a new server or something um i guess that's that's where it all comes down to that's all up to blizzard i suppose you know at that point it's really kind of how much more money do they want to put into that section i guess but i don't know at the end of the day if people are really really demanding it you know they can go kind of go from there but I don't know. I think the more options, the better, personally. Yeah, the more options you also give, but, like, I mean, that also kind of splits the whole community, you know? True. Like, so, say you give, like, the BC option, or say you give options, right? So, you got you can either go BC or you can stay in Classic forever. Like, what if your entire guild, like, goes mm, to BC and you're kind of there, you're like, okay, cool. Right. So, yeah, so I suppose. Amongst, True. And then they need multiple teams for different... Mm eras you know it's like unless they just plan to keep advancing stuff into the future to end up catching up to where we are now you know? right like, and then at that point it's like you know okay, who's gonna want to go play again, right you know? let's go back again dude so like, that, oh, that, i don't fuck, know remember classic two yeah, let's dude. do classic I remember three. day one brother stress test yeah yeah so yeah and that's it, it's a, a huge concern i think for most people who are excited for classic because I'm going to dump a fuckload of time into this game. Like, I am going to play vanilla WoW until I have uh, nothing else to Nubs do. Nubs for game. hands. Like, I'm, I'm going to go hard. And <laughs> to say, to say like, um, like, sooner or later down the line, I'm going to run out of shit to do. But I do have a lot of shit to do for the first three plus months. But... It's. It, I don't think it's a bad thing to be concerned about what's going to happen because nothing like this has ever happened before to any of us in a video game that we enjoy. Like, obviously, old school RuneScape is like an outlier, but I mean, for when it comes to WoW, it's it's just going to be. There's a lot of questions, and I think um, Blizzard listening to the community is their biggest thing they should focus on right now. Mm hmm. I agree entirely. Blizzard could definitely do a bit more of that. Even this whole uh, sh like beta thing, like I know it's just level thirty beta, and it doesn't really matter. The characters are going to be injured, that uh, are going to be deleted at the end anyway. But still, there's like some people that get into the beta. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how did you get in? Dude, but, I mean, there's so I many more people that are about that. There are so many people that feel they're more valued, you know. But at, really, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, cool, whatever. Like, you got in, you didn't. But I don't know. It's like. But when have they ever really listened to their community also, you know? Like, it's kind of like, it took this long for the given sim that we wanted classic WoW, you know? It was, you think you do, yeah. but you don't. That forever. And... Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, clearly Blizzard is one of the worst culprits when it comes to listening to community feed or wanting it in general. I mean, it's just, it's sad, really. 
I mean, we all know companies and games that have fallen off <coughs> Call of Duty um, where they just didn't listen to people and it turned out to be worse for them. Obviously, Call of Duty is still making fucking billions, but mm-hmm. still, it bothers, it bothers me to like, be looking forward to the next COD every single year when I literally barely played this last two or three CODs. Yeah, I remember. Uh, oh shit! Hold on. <laughs> You're good, dude. Um, I, I mean, hopefully, I mean, I'm such a COD fan to the, you know to the day I die. I mean, that's a that's a special place in my heart for Call of Duty. I could talk about COD forever and just what they could do to fix it. And you know, you can just say, oh, there's always next year. You know, I mean, I guess there's always next year. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not that hyped for the new COD. Am I going to play it and buy it? Heck yeah, I'm going to play and buy it. I'm addicted to the gosh darn first-person shooter franchise, especially Call of Duty. Sounds like it's going to be a little more bare bones from what I've heard. I'm not going to believe anything until I physically see some sort of, you know, real gameplay, get my hands on a beta, etc., etc. But I don't know about you guys. I don't know how excited you are for another COD release, if it's just kind of the same old shiz every single year. If you're going to play it, if you're not going to play it, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at right now with Call of Duty as a whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotta be honest with you, I've never really been super been into Call of Duty. Like, I think it was like last uh, last week that you said that they make a new game every year that I never even realized that they do make a new game every fucking year. And I was like, oh, they wow. Do. No yep. why they it, I know, it's hard, it's hard for me. I mean, it's, it's kind of just like, I don't know. Like, I feel like they just give you the same stuff every year. It's like... It's hard for me because I love competitive COD. I mean, I grew up on that shit. I competed for a while, did some amateur COD for a while, and it's just hard to keep a game that competitive when the title changes every single year, you know? When you got to balance out new stuff every single year. You got to compete with different guns every single year, different maps every single year, you know? Different, I mean, I supposedly they might there might be a different engine this year on on the next COD and there's also some rumors going around. I don't know how true this is, but supposedly this COD's going to have cross platform on it. And the big question I have for that is how is Call of Duty going to be played on a competitive system now? And what the rumors are, are that people are going to, or at least the pro league for people that are going to be in the pro league. Um, the rumors are that it's going to be played on PC, but with controllers. So that's kind of, interesting on a Fortnite kind of thing. yeah which honestly might not be a terrible idea in all honesty i think but who i don't know if unless they do it like how Fortnite does it where i think it's how you you have a certain amount of whatever it's like a pc player console player in your lobby and then it kind of goes off of that uh for qu- cross platform and whatnot but you know i guess the more the merrier with cross platform i mean more and more games are coming out with it I think it's great, you know, be able to play with your friends. Let's just say Jimmy over there don't have no PC. You know, he's booting up the Xbox. You can invite him over and, and play some games with them. I think that's, you know, almost necessary for these big titles, in my opinion. Great, great looks for COD. Hope, hopefully it pans out, man. I really do hope it pans out. All these rumors and allegations. <laughs> I think they could... I- I don't know. This is just me personally. I feel mm-hmm. like they have the updates coming out like very like close together. I think they could spread them out a bit. Maybe make one game last a little bit longer. Maybe put a little more time into the updates. Come out with a little more with each update, and instead of I don't know one sniper every couple months, add I don't know new challenges or something, slightly different modes. I don't know. Just keep working, trying to be innovative along a certain game instead of i don't know coming out with a new shit can every every year yeah and and the biggest thing that i have a problem with it is um i mean obviously i'm a culprit of this because i bought every single one um is people still buy it and it sucks because until people really revolt to it'll never happen what what they 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 don't want this kind of thing it's just it's just awful, really, because it's just going to be a constant cycle until mm-hmm. one of these games hits. I mean, Starting obviously, Black Ops for the um, the uh, BR that was a big, big thing. That's what saved the game, in my personal um, opinion. 
Yeah, and uh, like that was awesome. But I personally, I, I've always been a fan of the basics. Black Ops One, COD Four, MW Two, Three. You know, like mm. none of these. Le- I mean, I, I liked Ghosts. I didn't like sliding. I didn't like leaning. I didn't like um, a lot of the kill streaks, like the dog and that. Um, but o- overall, I just want. I do want bare bones. I think. That's where Call of Duty showed their best players because it was a more even playing field. There wasn't specialists. There wasn't things that could mm-hmm. one shot you like the uh, Annihilator and shit. It's not that I don't mind specialists, honestly. Like, yeah, it's cool. It's nice to switch things up. You kind of got to cater to a new, newer generation of, you know, gamers that are into the FPS genre now because not everyone's going to play a COD 4. Let's just be honest. People are going to get bored of that pretty quick. Unfortunately, that's just the sad truth of it. But it's, it's not that I don't I dislike specialists. It's just how easy it is to get some of the specialists. Pe- I think Call of Duty does a really good job at rewarding players that aren't very great at the game. And yeah, and I think that needs to change because back when I started playing COD back in COD 3, COD, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the original Modern Warfare, um, like i only learned from being punished in the game like don't push this area of the map or you're probably gonna get fragged or uh, a claymore is gonna probably be in this building or whatever and then you get that satisfaction of getting the three kill streak you know the three five seven classic three five sevens you know and then once you kind of get that you know that dopamine feeling of going on a real nice kill streak without dying and stuff like that you know then there's that satisfaction. You're not going to get one shotted by an annihilator, or there's not going to be a war machine thumping nades across the map, you know, off of someone that caps a flag and gets one kill type of thing for a specialist streak. It's it's kind of silly in my opinion, but I don't know. What do you guys think about like specialists and the, how easy the kill streaks and stuff are to get in the new CODs? I think it's ridiculous. I'm but. not a fan of it at all. <laughs> well, you're a, Used to feel you're a sniper too, so. At one point. <laughs> no, it's it, everything's so easy i feel like all these guns are so fast you like have to challenge yourself to use like harder shit because it's just like they melt now mm-hmm. i feel like any like snipers either shoot so fast the bolt resets immediately or the gun that's supposed to be like a what was that that like the really weak sniper in black ops 2 that was like only used for headshots ballista. no not the ballista xr uh what's the name of either it? way anyway it's <laughs> no it's like a third of the damage of the ballista oh, but people no. used to only go for headshots like those guns are like killing to the chest now. right oh god so yeah. it's like things have definitely changed and i think for the worse yeah like you said and that's a good point though it's just know. not as challenging it's easier to snipe i feel like everyone's just amazing at it i mean i guess that's more people play it more people get better everything True. Yeah, competition just goes up. So right. this is let's think about some games where um the companies have leaned more towards the casual crowd to instead of the more hardcore players and when that's ever been successful. Because I can't think of one. Um Blizzard. <clears throat> why do you think WoW is in such a tough spot right now? Because they lean towards that. Destiny. And that's, hurt, that's hurting their player base. Destiny also. There's hardcore players in Destiny. If you give them shit that is really hard to get, people will go for that and play your game. Every That's the fun of the day. game for me, at least, is being yeah. being able to set your eyes on a goal and rewarding a player that's going to want to commit the time. This goes for any game, as a matter of fact, like going for, you know, back in the day, like camos, like Black Ops 2 camos. I think that was the best uh thing put into the game just challenges going for these bloodthirsty medals doing this long shots whatever and it was satisfying you saw someone with diamond camo and black ops 2 and you're like that guy put in the work you know um but i mean same thing applies for destiny 2 as well if there's a certain weapon that you can only get from putting in a lot of hours whatever it is it's like triumph challenges or if it's uh, you know a pvp gun or you have to complete this raid with your raid group in order to have a chance at dropping this specific weapon whatever the case may be people are going to go for it but then there's also that feeling of accomplishment where where you see you know even if someone else gets it you're like man i want that you know that's that's what you want to shoot for i think yeah 
I, I, and I think it needs there needs to be a good balance, of course, where right. yes. casual crowd can still mm-hmm. enjoy it, but hardcore people can really shine. I think that's the biggest thing that games miss nowadays is there's not room to shine much anymore. You don't mm. feel like you're one of the outliers anymore because you're using stuff that's like there handed to you on a silver use. platter. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. And it's just like, uh, I don't know. Overall, I think more game companies, when it comes to games that they want longevity from, when I played um, Black Ops 1, I felt like it took forever for the next Call of Duty to come out because it was just a well-done game. I think the leveling was done great in that game, too. Just the XP alone, dude. It felt like it took years to prestige in that game. Right, And, and currently... It's like we were just talking about how a new COD every year and it's like, holy, wait, a new COD is every year. That's fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It doesn't, like, it didn't seem like that back in the day. I felt right, like I played really COD didn't. for a full year then. Like I wanted to hop on after school on the weekend with my buds and just go. Like yep. I don't get that feeling very much anymore, honestly, unless a really good game comes out. I, I will say this. I have that feeling with Battalion right now. That game, <laughs> dude, it is one of the better FPSs out right now. I'm I'm a freak for first person shooter games, and that game, dude, it's it's almost a ten out of ten for me. Maybe that's the competitive juices flowing in me, but I I don't know, man. I really like it, dude. I haven't even looked at it, but uh. This morning, I'll tell you what I did look at. I woke up and I saw Doctor Disrespect's tweet <laughs> to shroud. Okay, about I wasn't it. the and only I was, one. And I, and I was, I was like, "What the fuck am I watching? Like, have like, what am I watching?" He like, killed he, that bit. That was good. Whatever, dude. Like, I'm going back to sleep. Like, I haven't looked at this game. Nothing. Like, <laughs> that was God. so fucking funny. I was dying when I watched. I don't know how he doesn't break in character, dude. He's just so in it to win it. Uh, it's crazy. You ever seen him like in real life? Yeah, no? he looks just like a normal tall dude. I saw him at uh, TwitchCon, no, and he's—I <laughs> mean, well, but he looks like a normal dude. Besides, he's like seven foot tall or something like that. He's it's insane. like the whole crowd is like walking, and he's like a full like uh, fucking above them or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this Doctor Disrespect. Yep, I saw him. I saw him IRL at 2016 TwitchCon when one of the first—I yeah. think it was like the first H1Z1 tournament. Yeah, and I was like, who is this massive dude wearing this gaming headset? That was Doctor Disrespect back then. I never heard of him then, but. I do yeah. remember seeing him like this guy is a tall glass of water, dude. Holy smokes! A tall yeah, he's huge. I couldn't believe it. I was like, no, you know who else is tall? I mean, this is mm. off the Call of Duty subject, but sorry, but mm. but uh, Ice Poseidon's really tall too. Uh, the he's a lanky You dude. shall not be named. You know, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> you shall, <laughs> you shall not be named. Uh, yeah, Taboo. like all the IRL, all the IRL streamers that like uh, whenever like he's around or whatever, they're like. Yo, Voldemort. So, like, that's what they'll say because, like, because, like, if you say his name, like, I guess his viewers will like harass you. Or oh my lord! <laughs> or like they'll harass the place you're at. So, wow, nice, nice community. But he's really tall as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he looks like a tall. It's usually those lanky dudes, you know what I mean? Like the long, noodly arms dudes. Like that guy's six five for sure. <laughs> you just did ice Poseidon right there. Yeah. With the long, noodly <laughs> arms. <laughs> just that's hits good. the hits the <laughs> hits the flail, dude. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Whatever, brother. Fuck it, dude. Whatever, bro. Fuck it, dude. Fuck it. Uh, Fuck it, dude. Dude, that's funny. Dude, that <laughs> that guy just goes to conventions. I can't and... even do it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, oh, God. Um, real quick, I wanted to talk about um, E3 is coming up. Xbox has, or Microsoft, they've said they're going to announce 14 titles this year. Xboxes? Yeah, so that's the most they've ever wow. done. Wow, creepers! Um, and Sony is not going this year, which yeah, is no. really new console. Woo! Yeah, so <laughs> I'm assuming oh Xbox the is going to announce their new console, um, and then <laughs> PS- PlayStation will announce theirs at some point soon too. Um, is there another event coming up soon? E3, E3, E3. Oh, no, um, after E3, I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know why. Sony's not doing it. I don't know if they have something planned or they what, have but. to have something planned if they're not going. E3 is the biggest convention of the year for games and just you know, like all that stuff. They did it, they must have done it for some reason. I don't know why. Um, maybe they just 
the timing. I don't know. It's very strange. All though. I know is that I've been hearing some big stuff about um, the next PlayStation, whatever they're going to call it, PS5 or whatever. Yeah, probably PS5. PS5, <laughs> that it's going to have actually decent hardware in it in terms of graphical capabilities and processing power and and speed speed for storage man ssds nice so dude like that's huge i mean people were already putting you know external hard drives onto their consoles because there's just no gosh darn storage (laughs) for the things like a thousand like i remember getting my xbox one the week it came out 500 gigs yeah that'll be enough (laughs) games red dead redemption I mean, obviously that's a PlayStation game, but dude, Red Dead Redemption is like 108 gigs, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, come Here's on, I can thing. have three games on my console. Wait, no. Okay, so, uh, so Mighty Microsoft said they're doing how many titles? Ten, 14, right? 14? Fourteen. Like new IPs or just titles? Like, I'm not sure. Honestly, okay. I don't remember. Um, and then in, either way, it's, three. I don't, dude. I'm so unaware of everything. Like. I, I watch I watch every single one that they've done the past like five years because I watch dropped frames, uh, with uh, Coat Carnage and okay, okay. all of those. Dudes. Um, so, so does Nintendo usually go to E3, right? Or... What's that? Does Nintendo usually go to E3? No, I think they they just do their own. They have their thing. own thing, uh, mm-hmm. but they might this year. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's gonna be weird though because. Sony was the one I always look forward to because they've had some amazing. Well, the exclusives, uh, dude, exclusives. alone. I mean, yeah. they are. I've I've been hearing things like they're gonna have the most the most exclusives they've ever had in in years past uh, coming up, which that's oh. like some bold stuff to say, man. You know what I mean? But yeah, they they have the most you know <laughs> exclusives in general, but the the most ever. Thinking to myself, what else could they? <laughs> what else could they have, man? Right. I'm excited for it, you know. Um, real quick, a nice transition here. We can talk about how this month is Pride Month and um uh, Xbox, PlayStation, Twitch, um a lot of big brand companies have been posting their support for Pride Month and the ratio at which people comment compared to sharing and liking is ridiculous. Really? The amount of people who are against homosexuals is insane and you see it a lot in the gaming community and it's very weird to me i don't Are know you're saying you guys... against or a lot of people against, against? really people, people hate the idea of it basically i feel being like it'd shown. be the opposite but it's the same it's the same thing on twitch where people hate the fact that um like the girl streamers are girls like they're just pissed Jeez. about that it's That's the same w keyboard uh, yeah. warriors dude <laughs> so so that's uh it i was i was looking at the xbox page earlier let me see if i can find it on twitter i'll tell you the ratio exactly but what are your guys thoughts on that exactly like why do you think that's even a thing i just think people I mean, want to hate other people because they're part of a group you know what i mean like I don't know. People just love that mob mentality. If some, if one person comments down below things like, "Yeah, you know, fuck you, man," this, this, and that, this and that, and then another person agrees with that person, then it's just a whole snowball effect from there on out. That I mean, that's that's my opinion. I just think there's just a lot of dickheads out there. Like, what what's bothering? What what is you know someone's you know opinions on whatever doing to you? You know what I'm saying? Like, what what's that gonna? What are they really doing I mean, to you? I don't know. That's also people in general. People generally like fear and uh, and they don't necessarily know they fear, but things they don't really know or understand. And so since they don't necessarily know they fear it or just they don't understand it, it's the lack of understanding. They usually lash out with anger. It's like, oh, you guys are fucking wrong. I'm right. And it's like just because you don't understand something, like it makes it wrong. Not necessarily. But how is that but bothering I, that person? You know what I mean? Like I mean, it's not even yeah, correlated with that like, person. Like whether or not you agree or disagree with that, that's fine. That's a whole different thing. But then you're interjecting in a conversation where it's just like you want it to be known that you literally yeah. hate this person for no reason or because of their beliefs or whatever. That's not cool. That, that's not cool. That's even like. The, that's with anything the people though that go out of their way to like comment on anything like right. you fucking you YouTube comments like hating stuff like like you're like who actually does that you are actually d- 
degenerate human beings will go out of your way. Oh man, I fucking hate this dude. You like, can just oh, click like, off. It's like, that who easy. Who actually like does that? Dude, people that have way too much time on their hands. That's who. Little kids. Like, little shit, man. Like, little butt cheek kids, brother. <laughs> what platform oh, was that on? Xbox. Originally. Right? Uh, it's uh, what like the like, people hating on Twitter, Prime and stuff? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's usually all social media. Just like like you can go see a Facebook shared post that like people oh, yeah. are like, oh, yeah, little fa- Facebook is where it happened the most. Shouldn't be married and like oh, I'm yeah. a Christian or like some other fucking. That's shit, f- like I don't know. That's fine to have your opinions, but like just cause like you said, just because you don't understand. You know yeah, what, yeah. what gives you the know, right like, to tell someone else what they can and can't do? I just yeah. I don't know. That's all I really got to say, but it's just... I mean, even then, like, so if I'm having an argument with you and you disagree with me, like, right. at the end of the day, like, I'm not gonna be like... Like, I'm not gonna go out of way, like, insult your family and tell you what you should and shouldn't do. Exactly. Like, you're not gonna do most, that be, IRL most, most, most of the time. I'll just be like, I'll be like, oh, you're fucking retarded and ignore you, you know? Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my usual way. go-to. I was like, I was like, that is an idiot. Let me just walk off. Yeah. <laughs> but... I'm not going to go out of my way to comment on every single post. It's also the internet, though, man. People can just they sit back and just go to it's work. Too you know? to it's way too this. easy to press send. Halfway. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think the biggest problem is the animosity that is on the internet nowadays. It's, it's right. Su- it sucks that people can get away with anything. Other people not knowing who they are after they've said shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Twitch needs to do a better job of that, especially with. I don't know if you guys saw the. Um, what was that game called? Fuck. Um, artifact section recently. Oh, um, yeah. My favorite. <laughs> but uh, people were posting um, the shooting videos. Um, they were posting like just really bad stuff over there. Um, and Twitch took a lo- like the whole video went through of the most recent shooting. Oof. And Twitch didn't get it down. Like, we're talking like 30 minutes of the video playing, and Twitch did not get it down. How many people are working at Twitch, you think? Mm. I don't know. I, like I don't know. Like 12, 14,000 or some shit. So, yeah. how can they not have some sort of global moderator it's just like start just throwing hammers down? It doesn't make sense. I mean, how often do you make go into fucking Summit's chat, and there's like five, five of them? Uh, five of them just sitting there. It's right. like, dude. You, you probably have a job to be doing instead of watching Summit right now. <laughs> I agree. If Summit's been around forever. You really think he's going to break a rule right now? Like, I wonder how fast else. they get notified of that stuff. You know, like who's really like, I don't know what goes down behind the scenes, obviously, but who really is watching just a random section? I mean, obviously, if it's popping yeah. off, maybe it's kind of a red flag, you know? And yeah, that's the thing is the viewer count on it was fucking insane. Yeah, that's when you got so like, it was one of the top out. ones. And it's just like, dude. I wonder like, what the process is to fully ban a channel. That's what I'm curious I, about. I mean, but also a lot of those channels were getting botted up to views. That is stuff. true. Like, and then all those there bot run channels. Like I remember looking over there. I mean, shit, I was watching full gadget, you know, <laughs> over there. <laughs> but uh, uh, they also had some anime videos playing too. Or like I was, I watched Hunter x Hunter all the way to like, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Hunter x Hunter. It's a really good anime. But all the way up to like mid, one mid first season or some shit, like until it kept on there. But, um, Again, it's just people like with bots, and I think I think uh, somewhere I read something had hidden at like Twitch maybe had a security leak, but I don't think that's actually what it was. Uh, but they're trying to get more uh, new accounts to get the two-factor authorization. Is the correct word? Yeah. There needs to be um, more depth in that man. Be able to stream. Yeah. I need people to make accounts in general because mm-hmm. I mean, as you guys have known, Ryan kind of went through it a little bit with me too. Had that whole situation go down with me where I had to like you know get local authorities involved and stuff with people harassing and just you know doing that whole whole thing um and that's just not cool you know i think there's some lengths that twitch can go to to making it easier for or i should say less easier for people to be able to just spam accounts and you know completely harass people because even at the end of the day i mean someone can make a billion emails a day and just click uh you know whatever okay keep going Mm mm-hmm there's got to be something I think that they can do. I don't know what that thing is or just start straight up IP banning people. Start hardware banning people, say. man, at that point. And, you know, people have VPNs. I get it. But, you know, after 25 times, is someone going to, you know, reset their IP 25 times? Maybe not, you know? Yeah. There needs to be 
a little bit more done, I think. If you got f however many, I know we're just kind of throwing numbers out there, but let's just say 10,000 people working at Twitch. You got to have some, I don't know, someone at least checking out something a little bit deeper, I think. It's just at this point, you know, it's it's kind of frustrating to deal with. I mean, I, I mean, I can deal with it for the most part, but it's just like, okay, here we go again, you know. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I know, like, I, I know some... Hackers are very interesting people. Early. They are. I know a few. There's some decent ones. There's some very malicious ones. Like There's some very, um, yeah. Like some are okay. Some are some work for fucking like bounties for hire, dude. Like right, it's worth some money. But uh, I mean, that being said, like if someone really wants to do something or get info from you, they, they can. The way they will for sure. Right. Uh, but also the transition top that is Twitch is uh, someone data mined them recently. Uh, and kind of discovered that they are testing out uh, sub-only streams for, um, or I guess partners will be able to have the options to do that, you know. And I don't necessarily know, like, I can't think of like, off the top of my head, like, what, uh, where, when that would be a good standing. Maybe she have, like, an already, like, well-known show, like. So a sub develop, to like, watch the streamer only. Yeah. So, okay. like, if you're not so a you sub, have you can't to even pay. watch it. Yeah, but maybe some people have some some type of content that's like really like maybe like a like kind of like like a show, a show? i guess like yeah say, yeah say, say a game of thrones type i'm just using this example say a game of thrones type stream there is or whatever and you only want people that's already well established like right i feel like that's the only way it would work or maybe like if joe rogan started streaming on yeah. twitch yeah exactly or someone well known <laughs> some that. sort of yeah. show that you you yeah, know like pay for this or actually no because he does all his shit for free he's not a mon yeah. money hungry asshole so. <laughs> I said that, but yeah it would give it would give a negative persona even that like if right. someone were to come on and be like oh i'm gonna do a pay show on twitch like yep. what are you a porn star like okay like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right dude it just went i don't think it would go over well in yeah. very very few situations maybe but I mean, uh, I mean, I listen or I watch Soda Pop and fucking religiously, as most of you guys know. Uh, and he gave an example where it might be okay. So he also he has an alt account where he streams on, where like if he wants to sh like, nope. if he wants to stream, but like, um, Shit. like he doesn't really want that many people there, not that many spurs, because usually when he goes live, like he get 30, 40 k viewers. Like his alt account, his name is uh, Skippy Poppin, and every now and then, like I follow it, and every now and then you'll see it go online, and like his chat's real chill, it's not moving. He responds and like he reads like. The normal people chat there like like i've had normal conversations with them there as well and so every now and then he'll do that so so maybe an alternative to doing that it would just be like a sub stream mm. okay yeah i know a couple streamers maybe. that do that but even then i feel like it would give a negative view to the public right they'd be like oh this dude just wants fucking money man yep it's all about mm. money dude it's the only thing people ever care about is money these guys stand twitch streamers all they talk about is the donation goal and the sub goal and the <laughs> just kidding yeah no i would definitely i definitely think it wouldn't go over too well in in mm. most cases interesting we'll see if that fully goes to fruition here um yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty interesting. Since we're on um I wanted to touch on this real quick cuz this is a big uh big thing that happened within the past week and I don't really talk too much drama on my stream. I'd kind of save it for this show. Um since we're kind of on the Twitch stuff, uh streamer/youtuber Young Nick Merks um had had his uh time of shine, I'll call it. So I'm going to try to lay the foundation here as quickly and as factual as I can. <clears throat> so Nick Merckx was part of the 100 Thieves organization, rep 100 Thieves all day long, baby. Um, he was a part of them for a long time, probably helped them, you know, from the ground up with uh, my boy Nate Shot. And I don't know all of the details behind the scenes, but a lot of stuff ended up getting leaked and uh, kind of hinted and talked about uh, through social media and, you know, on stream and stuff like that. Um, so to lay the foundation of this whole situation, uh, Nick wasn't too fond of 100 Thieves and wanted out to kind of build his own brand and, you know, I guess join a, a, another org. Um, but what people didn't know was joining another org. People just, you know, considered Nick to be a pretty successful guy in his own brand and all that sort of stuff and just wanted to get out of the 100 Thieves name and whatnot. But um, he left he left 100 Thieves and about 
two or three days later announced he is joining FaZe Clan. And people were kind of mind blown by that. I was even mind blown by that. And I don't know the whole reasoning behind it. Supposedly, uh, since Nick was uh, one of the original, I, well, I don't, I don't want to say founders, but uh, you know, people that helped build up 100 Thieves as an organization, um, he he wanted some sort of equity with them. Um, I don't know if th this was super accurate. I've been hearing five percent of however much you know 100 thieves is worth what whether that's 100 million dollars or whatever the case may be supposedly nick um and nade made some sort of mutual agreement way back in the day whether that was you know over a gentleman's agreement yeah i don't i, I obviously it wasn't over you know any contract of some sort because i don't think he would have left 100 thieves if that was the case um but basically he wasn't happy with the decision where Nade was going with franchising, 100 Thieves getting sponsorships, et cetera, et cetera. And things led down to uh, Nick Merck supposedly not getting his 5% or whatever his initial cut was uh, for having that early equity in 100 Thieves, if that was the case, whether it was equity or some sort of um, percentage that he was promised by, by Matt Haig. Uh, and yeah, he ended up basically joining phase within three days or so of announcing his leave from 100 thieves. So that's kind of, I tried to sum that up as quick as I could. What do you guys think? What do you guys think on that whole situation of him doing that so quickly? Cause it seemed very planned and it seemed like he had that ready to go from the get go because of how fast it was. Mike. I think it was a huge. You're muted, Dave. I I thought it was a huge, really smart business move on Nick's. Um, with all the Tfue drama going on, Tfue left phase. Oh, now it looks like uh, Nick Merckx is replacing him, hmm. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I think, um. Just because I've watched Nick Merckx for so long, I really do think he's telling the truth when he was supposed to get the 5% equity. Oh, I believe him. Um, and what that comes to, for all you who don't know, is it would be around $5 million. Roughly speaking, right. supposed to be given. Um, and, I mean, I I don't personally follow um, uh, Nade Shot very much. Mm -hmm. I don't really see what he does or anything like that. But... Um, yeah, it, it's kind of like a a very strange. It's like a weird breakup. It's, a it's very, what it feels like, dude. Yeah, and yeah. and I think obviously I don't think Nick really wants to talk about it too much because he doesn't want to get into the drama. Nope. Um, and I don't think Nate Shot has talked about it at all. But, he mentioned um, that he and Nick are on different terms, basically, on his stream. And he will go no further about it. That's pretty much pretty much all he said. Yeah. So it, I mean, obviously, it's it's probably going to be dead drama next week. But hundred percent. Just thought I, I'd it would mention be, it. It'd be interest. No, I'm just saying. Uh, it'd be interesting to know what really went case. down, dude. I, I, I'm curious personally. Because it just it just seems like a bad breakup. I think I worded that perfectly because I'm big you know supporter of 100 thieves and and nade shot and his whole coming up i i wouldn't be doing this obviously if i never found him and uh and all of that stuff but that's besides the point i still enjoyed nick as a content creator because i think he's one of the more entertaining individuals on twitch and for the fortnite community and the the console community as well he does a great job of representing them i think it was a smart business move a s now here's the thing was it a smart morale move for him in terms of whatever it is sponsorships friendships you know it seems i don't think nick and nate are going to be talking ever again unfortunately that's kind of the whole unfortunate part of this and it's sad to see that uh money was the root of all this is what it it, it pretty much is summing up and it sucks to see but in terms of business i think he made a great move his timing was perfect but in terms of you know, me being a fan of the organization and fans of both of them, it's kind of, it's really hard to, to swallow that 
in terms of being a viewer and a supporter of both of them. Yeah, I think it was definitely a good, uh, I mean, you took the opportunity. It, right. He probably had, had it on his mind for a bit before he did it. And then uh, just saw the recent drama that was before his. And then uh, I said, well, let's, you know, let's hit it. Yeah. And then, cause, I mean, there's no such thing as bad publicity. I mean, right. you can say there is, there's not, but I mean. Publicity is publicity, and man. It, and it might feel that way, but I mean, there's still more eyes on you, you know, like. Mm-hmm. His viewer count doubled literally the day after. Yeah. He went up 60k viewers. <laughs> Just like... Oh. I don't think people like that he jumped so quickly, but I think it's honestly a good thing that he had it planned <laughs> ahead of time. No, like, yeah. These guys are top-tier streamers, honestly. Like, it's it's a very important thing to make sure they have everything in line. Like, yep. how serious people need to take it. Like, for example... What's your streak at the moment, Bren? Like five fifty-eight. That's the type of shit you need to like, <laughs> right? Consistently keep up with. Yeah. So he needs to like make sure he's on par. He's got yeah. something yeah. lined I up. Mean, like he made a good choice, I think. Yeah. It was just really quick because he was with Hundred Thieves for about two years. You know, it's almost that yeah. there was no. It seemed that there was no bond. Almost, it's like. I mean, these guys were doing vlogs together, making content. They had plans on doing a podcast, him and Nick. Nick didn't want anything to do with it, supposedly. I don't know the full details. I would like to know more of what really went down behind the scenes. How much money are we really talking? You know, because Nick is a huge, a huge broadcaster. How much is 500 million or not 500 million, $5 million to his brand? You know, what's is that? Unless it's five you know, million dollars. it's five million dollars. But it's a lot of funny, dude. It is. I think it, I think it's a big <laughs> well, what, what the hell would I would? You don't want to know what I'd do for five million. I would know dollars. what I would want to do for five hundred million dollars <laughs> okay. or five million. I keep saying five hundred million. Jeez, <laughs> I won the lottery. Either or, man. Right. But uh, uh, so I think the biggest thing when it comes down to it is, um, I think there was definitely some drama behind the scenes that they're not talking about for some sure. loyalty issues, no, whether it was no on way. Nick's side or Nades. Loyalty yeah, for sure. There was some there were some issues for sure between them or other people within a hundred thieves. <clears throat> I'm um, sure it was deeper than that. Something's there that's not being talked about. For- right. And I don't think they want that on or <clears throat> they don't want that stuff in the spotlight because then it would it would probably make Nick look bad and Matt look bad. That's probably why they're not speaking about it. But as a as a fan and as a supporter for seriously close to a decade of Nate Shot, it's just like, oh man, this is this is tough to see. You know, two homies for years doing stuff together almost, you know, every whatever, every couple weeks and just making content and doing well and growing the brand and growing the organization and then just like that it's gone it's whoa like whoa that's a lot of that's a lot to take in all at once and then him him i think nick kind of jumping ship that quick even it was even a bigger whoa at least for me me personally so i watch both Mm -hmm. of them on a consistent basis i personally think that if I were in Nick's position, I would have done the same exact thing. I think most people would have. It was smart, really good timing. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of money, um, I saw a post by Chinglish TV, who's a WoW streamer of a long time. Good old um, Chinglish, dude. And Sick he was head talking tats. about how yeah. <laughs> people were talking about quitting school slash work to full-time stream. Oh, this topic oh, don't get me again, going, Ryan. Oh. Um, and I think it's coming up again because classic WoW stuff like that. Oh, but, Jesus. Um, what? I guess the best question would be: At what point do you think full-time streaming is um, attainable? An option? Can I go off here? <laughs> and what the the definition of full-time streaming is? You you use it Supporting as yourself. a job to support every part of your life. And, okay. Or most parts. So the question is, at what point is that attainable? Uh huh. Okay. When when is that comfortable? 
I think when you're comfortably able to pay all of your bills, um, pay your rent, and live comfortably, I think is the right time to do, uh, you know, if you're able to support yourself in your everyday livelihood with your money or your revenue that you earn from your broadcast, that's when I think that's okay to go full time. A lot of people get that mistaken. I've never been streaming and not had a job of some sort. I think that's, I mean, the same thing goes for school, I think, you know, always have a backup plan. That's what I, I would highly suggest to people. Always have some sort of backup plan, whether that's, you know, graduating, having a degree in your back pocket, whether that's working a part-time job, which I did for years, whether that's working a full-time job, which I'm currently doing now, but I'm still putting in that, that, si that time, you know? It's all about balancing the time, putting in the time, and making sure you have a backup plan. The, so the biggest thing that I think, um, so let's say that for two or three months straight, you've been paying off all of your bills through streaming um, and you're, you're, you're comfortable in the position you're in. At that point, even, I mm. would say you should not consider quitting a job Quitting something outside work part of time because at least we we all know what happens on twitch to big streamers but also what we've seen from friends of ours or other streamers yeah. that we watch your viewer count can drop in two days in a to, day <laughs> to nothing right maybe either through a bad decision of switching to a different game or drama or whatever a, a, a switch of when you stream for time mm -hmm. it, it's so the way I see it is if you have a couple of partnerships outside of streaming through G Fuel, through yep. whatever, um, and you have, I would say, a sub count of 1K. 100% at least. I was going to say. 1K or above minimum. and uh, That's minimum, too. I mean, that's your, your count, I guess you could, if you're at the 1K sub count, you're kind of like. I mean, I don't know. You're if comfortable. You have 1K sub count, you need to have active <laughs> subs. Yeah. I would say 400 to 500 viewers plus. That yeah. that that'd be my number if if that opportunity ever came to me, that's when I'd be like, "Okay, I think this is something that's an option now." Yeah. But I when I saw Chinglish's post, first thing I thought was are we talking about affiliates with 10 to 15 viewers saying they're going to try going full time? That's right the now problem. And, and drop everything not. else because that is an awful idea. And I, there are learn. very They're few not. affiliates They'll learn. They'll that have are, to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, that's, right. that's their choice. That's a life <laughs> choice, man. I think Weed that, I think that there are some very, very, very significant cases where there's a very supportive community very knit tuck tight community that wants to see you go full time and you're just not quite there yet but you're still an affiliate i think there's those top more top tier affiliates that don't get you know 500 views per se but their community is just you know there are those people out there that are getting bit donations every single day that are getting gifted subs every single day that there's someone that comes in their stream and wants to support you know their brand and donates once a week you know there are people like that i mean i i mean even me personally i have some people like that that'll stop in once every month to just drop a sub by the stream just because they want to see you know see me continue and support support the dream and stuff like that or drop in a donation once a month or something you know but uh to have that on a con you need to have that on a consistent basis obviously and that's a super mm -hmm. super super rare occasion i think for an affiliate i should say yeah absolutely yeah i thought it was just an interesting topic no 100 percent. there's so many people that next, just for the next yeah. 40 years that topic's gonna come up 100 so percent. Mm -hmm. I, I hope there's people out there that might hear this and really think about what they're doing before they make a bad decision like i said right away during my little rant <clears throat> just have a give backup yourself. plan give yourself yeah. a little cushion man 
you know whether yeah. that's working a full-time job for a year and then quitting that and then having a backup some backup money and then trying to go full-time after that push or even just having a, a part-time gig i did a part-time gig for a couple years and granted you know i was very lucky and blessed to be able to have my parents kind of support the part-time streaming you know i make part-time money streaming which is great so i'm able to pay for all of my games and all of my uh, skin addictions, um, <laughs> my WoW subscription, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to do that just through my stream um, and all of that. But that doesn't give me an excuse to just because I'm making money doing what I love to just not have some sort of little cushion. Again, whether that's a part time gig, whether that's a full time gig, whether that's some sort of side hustle you got going on, selling merchandise, whatever you got going on. Um, yeah, just. Just don't be stupid with it. Always have some sort of savings, back a uh, little back cushion, stuff stuff along those lines. That's my advice to those that may or may not be listening to me rant about it because I've been through it. It's just like, man, what would it take for me to get to that spot where I have an opportunity to go full time? And you know, you're adding up the numbers, and it's got to be consistent because if you're not consistent you're not going to be able to pay bills and you know it's just it becomes real life at that point you know you can't can't really live off of it if you're not paying uh for certain things you I mean you kind of need your internet you kind of need your food you kind of need electricity you know it, the list goes on and on and I was on say, you can't go off grid and then stream right exactly yeah. i mean that's a full commitment <laughs> too to the mountains and that, stream full time right there you ain't, you ain't yeah. gonna be able to take vacations for a long time <laughs> think about that dude i mean people expect you on a live stream excuse me <clears throat> to be live all the time and if you're not live all the time or at least on your schedule sadly the truth is people are going to unsub people are not going to support that anymore if you're if you're not you know there when you're promising to be there and granted, there's God bless those people out there that, you know, keep you on auto pay, man. But, you know, not everyone's like that, unfortunately, which is the sad truth. So sorry, I'm, I'm done ranting. Someone else talk. I could go on about this topic for I think about this stuff all the time. But no, nah, man, it's true. Like uh, there's actually dude, even being in a full time stream, there's so much more that goes into it that like it's so super strong. like honestly like i'd love to fucking do it you know but honestly i don't know if i could like i don't like i don't know if i could deal with every month to month but, like oh fuck like oh it's the dedication okay man. next month like you know like am i gonna be able to like hit up sponsors and like get rejected or like am i gonna be able to watch my uh sub count drop every month because mm. i gotta get the subs last month and then just take that hit like, am I gonna be able to have a consistent game to play for the next fucking year? What if the ser- what if I'm playing WoW? What if I'm playing Classic WoW for like a good two months? What if they're like, oh, this sucks? And they shut the fucking server down. What do I do then? You know, where's my content now? Like, shower thoughts with Spark. <laughs> there's so much shit to deal with. It, like, yeah, yeah, it's streaming is scary. It really is. I think uh, it's hard because there's not a lot of people who can relate to it unless you're an avid viewer or supporter or content creator Mm -hmm. what's your view on it david i know you do your fishing streams every now and again but you're not really (laughs) you know you're you're kind of more on the outside more of like a viewer in terms of the twitch (laughs) world what do you think on the whole situation of that people just quitting everything for Um, for the dream honestly it's upsetting to me it's sad it is no really it is sad like I've I've wasted like a decent amount, not not wasted. I've spent a lot of time on games when I could be doing other things. Like there, there have been times in my life when I've spent way too much time on games, and maybe I'd qualify for that disorder. (laughs) But it's just where's my check? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Where's my disability check? I want front uh, front row parking. That's what I'm saying. There we go. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I've just always been someone that's never been able to fully commit to something that I can't like really make sure I'm locking down like a foreseeable future in it. Like I've been at the same job for five years. I have like, same. you talk about this a lot. Like you don't enjoy it too much, which I don't, but like I'm starting to enjoy it even more. (laughs) <laughs> which is odd i guess but i'm f- i'm very good with it <laughs> um i don't know it just i think people need a fallback and like it's nice having 
a job knowing like, yep, they need me here. Not you are by yourself. Just go get it. Do whatever you can. Like I have a set schedule. I'm there. I do that. I go home and I'm getting the job done and that's it. I'm still getting my money. Yep. Whether there's work or not, they send me home. I still get paid for the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a very different thing. If you don't get viewers, you shut your stream off. That's it. Like, so quick question <laughs> you for you, Dave. And you need to get a lot of luck when it comes to streaming. I agree. I think. Yeah. What, um, in terms of just like content creation, this can go for anything. It can also go for streaming, YouTube, whatever. Uh, in terms of strictly content creation, what would turn someone like you off, uh, from pushing more to it? And, and it doesn't necessarily just have to be money, but I just don't think a lot of people realize what really goes into it and what, you know, people are willing to dedicate to it. So from someone from the outside a little bit, Ooh. what what's the biggest thing that kind of is like whoa do i really want to do this well immediately the first thing is the numbers mm. so, <laughs> like you start your stream up and you get a couple viewers and you're one of them yeah it's a <laughs> it's, it's like a disheartening my, feeling i agree it definitely is when you see like let me glance real quick just to the left Twenty nine thousand. that was the number that i saw at the top of my screen when i just glanced like that's a big number to stadium. That was soda. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, if that's like what's desired, like, and I get that's what it is. Like, if you're doing content creation, like, you want to keep progressing. Like, Correct. It's just like anything in life, you want to keep progressing, climb that ladder, and just get higher and higher. That's why I'm like, I get why Nick Merckx is pissed off about potentially $5 million. Like, <laughs> if, I don't know. I guess I'm a greedy bastard, and like, if I had the opportunity to make the money, I'd be wanting to make money for my kids, their kids, their Absolutely. kids' kids, no, I'm on and on. I, I, I guess I could be that greedy guy that just keeps going for it. I don't know, but I wouldn't even say greedy because that whole situation seemed like it's... it was more of a gentleman's thing and a you know a promise. He seems like a genuine guy to me. Correct. Like, yeah. He, he, so... yeah. He just seems like someone that doesn't. I think something in between at the higher ups business yeah, wise something. got screwed up and maybe yeah, it was past just, Nate shots reach where he's like, dude, exactly. I can't do it's anything. It's not just the boys anymore. No, it's, it's, it's got people that team. got millions and millions of dollars on the line. Who knows? Maybe he right. signed something like Tifu that he didn't know he was signing wants out of it. Just this is the end of the contract, right? You don't get your $5 million if you leave type yeah. of deal. Maybe, you know, who knows? Who knows? Don't we know. don't know. Exactly. All right. Could be anything. Than yeah. five. It's an inter it's interesting <laughs> to have the view on the outside though, because you know, so many people want to get into this business, whether it's for money or not. A lot, I mean, I'm kind of an old OG and old old head when it comes to this stuff. I just started doing this for montages, man, and mm -hmm. posting YouTube videos and hoping YouTube videos got views and like you you would say, Oh, did you see that video type of thing? And then yep. one thing led to another. I, I figured out I could do content on YouTube while streaming live. And that just blew my mind. And then I figured out my boy Nate Shot was doing it while working at McDonald's, you know. So he was like, oh, he can pay for some of his stuff doing, you know, YouTube while working his job. So I'm like, this could be something sweet. I would love to do that. And then it just kind of led from there. I wouldn't, I never would have thought in a million years I'd be doing this as one of my part-time jobs, you know. Yeah. Who knows that, though. But I'm, I'm, I'm OG when it comes to that stuff. Like, yeah, it's great to make money. Who doesn't like making money? Who doesn't like paying for things, especially paying for things when you play it's, video games? Come on, yeah. you know? It's I'm a, a little big different. focus for, I mean, if you, if you want to do it full time, that's, that's got to be so. one of your, you know, <laughs> checkpoints for sure. No. Full time is just that. I think you can do it in time. a non greedy way, though. I think a lot of people, you know, misperceive the, you know, the whole view oh, when I it mean, comes to just business. That's part of the reason why I don't stream too, too much. It's just not my thing, per se, I guess. And it's I think, not everyone's honestly, thing, dude. I don't know. I like more of a uh, the feel of YouTube that you can put more time into a video. Not saying that this is like lower quality or lower I think YouTube's production harder. because it's still high production. But like, mm -hmm. for example, Doc is it's like watching a freaking uh, freaking SNL sketch every every night or something mm -hmm. almost it's like he puts a lot of work into it 
but YouTube, like you really can, like you can have those massive projects. You can have that right. big thing. You, I don't YouTube know. reaches I, out differently too. It's like it yeah, hits a it different part of entertainment. Connects, yeah, I don't know. That's what it started for me. Like I, I really got attracted to it. Like just recording clips with my buddies. Yep. Like, dude, I was just talking to Ryan about it last night. Like if I hear a good song, and I feel like it's almost got like cinematic feel. Like it could almost be a movie trailer. I'm like, I'm going through my old montage clips in my head <laughs> yep. and syncing up to the to the song in my head. Like, just, I don't know. It's the, no, it's, I don't know. It's so feeling. I got a question for you then, Dave. Um, <laughs> if, if the next Call of Duty is decent for um, montage potential, would you consider editing your own stuff again? Just for fun? No. No, uh, just for fun, but like to like consistently post to YouTube? No, not Call of Duty. If I was to do anything, it'd be like a, I don't know, outdoor stuff. And, yeah, more outdoorsy, and I'm getting into that a whole lot more. So. That'd be cool. That's a, it's a pretty big, <clears throat> you know, viewing market. A lot of people are interested in that stuff, <clears throat> and just like different personalities revolving around like the whole outdoor community. I mean, you're wearing a Lunker shirt right now. Lunkers TV. Yep, so those right guys, there. those guys do it right. Oh yeah, the Guggen Squad, yeah. man. They they got their podcast, they got their YouTube high high production value on their videos. Like they've gotten the highest, the best equipment they can. They've got people filming for them. So it's it looks very nice. I see I see where you're coming from though, because like it's almost, almost like, like a, a project. Feel. You're working like on a yeah. project, you know, and when you see yeah. that project come to fruition and just fully come together and like a whole like it's like art, dude. Like it's yeah. like a it's like a beautiful cinematic piece kind of just meshing together if you do it the right way. And then you're it's just it's like satisfying, you know. It requires more effort, but oh, maybe one hundred percent is harder. I don't know, like no? slightly more thought process like stream oh. you can kind of like well you just, i don't want to say wing it you can you can have a can set schedule definitely. and do things but i mean you can you can wing it you can wing I think it, it goes, <laughs> I think the, difference, the big difference is all eyes on me compared to sit there listen to your own music and edit a video yeah uh streaming is for me personally um i don't i, I think i'm moving more and more away from using a webcam while i stream um, I feel more comfortable in my own space without camera, and I think YouTube is a good um, grasp th for that when it comes to editing and all yeah. of that. Is it, it could be I could see it be very relaxing for somebody to do for like an hour or two every mm -hmm. other night or something, um, compared to streaming where it's like you are your your content is happening in the moment, and you need to. Do your best at it. That makes sense. Yeah, That's you have a good more point. time to think and react when when it comes to YouTube too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you got no one in your chat. I mean, there there is there's comment section, but I'll be honest. If I, if I was doing YouTube, I wouldn't pay attention to them. I I never have. Yeah. I, I go back three years later, and I notice that my buddy was shitting on me in one of my comments. I'm like, oh, that <laughs> asshole. <laughs> right on. Yeah. yeah. That's a big thing too. I think people can't get caught up in the comments. Like they just gotta keep they grinding. They let it get to them, man. <laughs> like I don't know. And that's the thing with streaming too. I brain the, don't know. It, brain. the biggest thing I've learned is if someone talks shit in your chat, ban them right away. Don't try to reason with them. None of that shit. Um, unless you know them, of course. Um, I see a lot of streamers just let it happen, and it's like, dude, if someone's got a negative attitude towards you already. Then what makes you think you're gonna change their mind? Like, mm -hmm. say fuck it, dude. Get them out of there. You know. Yeah, I ban people fucking instantly. It's getting some negative stuff. <laughs> it's so I'm like, funny. I'm like, I'm like, okay, dude. Like, later, it's bro. It's not worth like, dealing with. Just like, get them out of like, there. Like, do I really want this piece of shit in my community? No. Like, right. Do I really want him shitting on all my friends? <laughs> like, hey, dude. Whatever. I get it, but I don't know. I think the whole you can ignore on YouTube, Twitch you can't. Yeah. <laughs> exactly the whole you, you webcam ban, thing too. Or else it'll just keep going and going and going. Right, the whole webcam thing too is it's whole. I don't know. I mean, I, I even overthink it too. I'm like, man, I could just, just turn off the webcam and it, I wouldn't even know I'm streaming. Sometimes that's what it feels like for me. Mm -hmm. Even though it's completely mm -hmm. the camera's still on, I just don't have the particular 
you know, um, source on the scene. It's just whatever turned mm-hmm. off. It's a whole different feel, you know? It's almost like it's... It almost seems more engaging, kind of. You know what I mean? It's like more... Yeah. It involves people with what you're doing more than just... They're less... They're not staring at you sitting exactly. there doing this. Which there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's engaging yeah. in its own way, too. But like with... Like, for instance, Ryan does, doesn't does do the webcam as much anymore. Maybe he'll throw on a stream with a webcam every now and again. But I feel like I can almost chill in Ryan's stream easier without a webcam. Maybe that's just me, like, watching other streams. Like, or even, mm-hmm. for instance, Lyrics Community. They don't care that he doesn't use a webcam. It's kind of more of a meme is like, <laughs> than anything at that yeah. point. But... The whole webcam bit is it's an interesting thing, you know, who likes to be on a camera all day long? You know, it's just not a right. normal thing for someone to do. And you feel like all I mean the whole uh, whoever said all eyes on you type of thing earlier, the whole yeah. eyes on you 24/7 can get a little, you know, stressful at times and you feel like people are judging you when you know whether they are or not but you just kind of feel that way it's like oh gosh this guy look at him he looks like he just rolled out of bed you know and just turned on the damn stream you know these people are always finding some Dude. way to just harp on you in any way shape or form it seems and it's like well I I, turn go. off the camera okay. then <laughs> go on i fucking go into people for saying i look tired or like I, tired. it's one of my biggest I, pet peeves why dude. would you ever tell anyone they fucking look tired either right? a they right. know they're fucking tired right. and you're literally pointing out nothing or b maybe they're having a great day and you just told right? them to like and then you're just like, know, right? it's like my day sucks now <laughs> thanks like, idiot hey, you know that you're like 14 years hours. older than you are <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Do you know that you are fatter than the sun by the way? Like <laughs> seriously, it's the same thing. I yeah, never understood like, it. Why are you tired? You you, you slept 12 hours. It's like Okay, I'm dude, not I didn't know there tired, was a fucking but thanks for the... keeping on tired. Like, <laughs> right. Like, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to be tired. I'm sorry. My yeah, fault. And, I, and I think the biggest part about it is um for for me personally when it comes to the webcam I've always had this thing. Uh, I've gone back to past streams when I play like Siege or something. When I played Siege without a webcam, I got 1v5s almost every single day. I started using, I could barely clutch two people. And it was the weirdest shit ever. It's a whole I, mindset, I, I dude. Che- I checked it in like so many games too. Like in WoW when I raided, I was raiding with a webcam when I started. Then I stopped with the webcam and I started to parse way better and I was doing way better all around. And I was like, holy shit, this is kind of weird. Maybe it's because it's another added on thing I have to think about or worry about. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm I'm an advocate for another mechanic. I'm like, man, is my webcam angle good? You know, can you see like my whole frame? Can you, is the lighting good enough? Is my ring light on? You know, is my camera like creak? It's just, ah, you know, it's just all there, right. man. Oh, yeah. I get it. I get it, Ryan. I'm, t- I'm turning it off right now, dude. Where is it? Boop. <laughs> no, seriously though. It's, it's a whole mindset thing, you know, it's a whole mental toughness thing too, when it comes to just like or it can, it can be a mental toughness thing it's like don't worry about what people say to you but a man or a woman can only handle so much a day and it's just yeah, to and the I, point of breaking sometimes and the interesting part about it is um we summit asmongold maybe not soda popping as much but um like you know people like that if they stream without a webcam guaranteed drop in reviewers i don't understand that and and i think the reason is is because they're known for doing it for so long people look forward to the physical reaction that they will have while playing a game it's Hmm. way funnier to see someone get stunned by something in a game where he like jumps back and he's like what the fuck was that Hmm. compared to if he had no webcam there and he just reacted you know we lose a man oh he's back (laughs) misclick probably um that's that's how i see it at least i think I've that's a really so- good point i've seen soda pop in the stream without a webcam and he's usually yeah. i mean it's soda pop and he's gonna get viewers no matter but like for someone like summit tim the tap man for instance i guarantee you tim the tap man his viewers drop he's so a very i think it comes with ener- energetic broadcasters exactly. not saying that's a bad thing to be an energetic broadcaster because i'm the same way i give it for the most part i give it 110 percent 
every single time I'm live. And I, I like to be very, I guess, engaging. I think it's an engagement thing. You know, people want to see your reactions. It's a great point you bring up. People want to see your reactions to something. Like if Ryan clutches a 1v5 in Siege, I want to see that shiz, you know? Right. I want to see that happen. I want to see the reaction. I want to see what's going on. I feel like uh, my webcam is definitely probably the one of the only entertaining I bring to my fucking stream. Like, uh, but that, that being said, I mean, like, I'm not saying I'm like amazing at games or nothing. You should check out. No, I fucking suck <laughs> at everything. But uh, like, I'm editing some video for like uh, for my YouTube channel, like, um, or I have been working on it. And most of my clips are like just zooming in on like to my fucking webcam or like right. my facial reaction of or like my something i'm doing in the background or like actually none of like very rarely it's act, the actual fucking gameplay but that that's mainly on me and that's also because games are fucking dry right now oh. <laughs> but get uh, in on diablo 3 with us dude ah, <laughs> i said the same thing uh, <laughs> now David's David's he's on something. diablo 3 right now he's like top 130 in the world or some shit or in oh season. no shit what does he play he plays a lot ah <laughs> <laughs> What are the coils with that game? I couldn't tell you, bro. I mean, he just started streaming, so he's always asking me all these questions. Like, hey, Sparky, how do I get my uh, name on your stream? And, <laughs> like, you, uh... and I'm like, I'm like, bro, I've been streaming for like fucking years. And like, finally, just because you started, now you're going to take interest. But that's just me throwing sass his way. Uh, but... Do you guys ever get those people in your chat? Not saying your buddy in particular, but those people in your chat rooms where they're they're always asking you about stream stuff personally. And it's I don't mind it too much. Like I like to really help people out when it comes to tech because I know how it is. You know, I've done my years of research. I know OBS like the back of my hand. Like I can figure out pretty much any tech issue for the most part by myself without help or without any help it's very rare i need to look up a youtube video these days but it's just like it's like the only time you ever see that person in your chat is like have a question about streaming yeah i think it's purposeful a lot of the time you think me. so yeah it's uh, it's, the, well, it's the let's, same let's say oh, sorry, let's say ahead. it's someone who you've told before um and then and then you're like Oh, just feel free to message me about it on Twitter, Discord, and then they continue to do it. It's like, okay, dude, right? I see. But um, I, mean, I, I, I like to see the positive in a lot of people. But on Twitch, man, there's not a lot of positive people. There's some sketchy yeah. people. You gotta really. Re I mean, I tweeted this a little while ago, but you gotta be careful of the the people you trust and let in your circle in this line of uh, I guess we'll call it business. Line of business. Line of work. You gotta be careful, man. There's a lot of snakes here, man. They're, they'll use anything they can. Uh, like, w whether it's, you know, <clears throat> using you for their benefit only, or using you to leech, whatever the case may be, or using you to just kind of crap on you as, as a streamer, because it's happened to me. It's ha I've seen it happen to a lot of buddies and a lot of friends of mine. It's, it's really unfortunate, because I grew up on this whole narrative of twitch uh justin tv being a pretty i'd say a pretty friendly uh you know area to be in and you know most people weren't you know too bad you see a lot of collabs of people and it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be anything else it'd just be a collab but you know there's always going to be those sneaky little slither and snake of snake like people that just you know they got a plan dude they got a plan from day one so, I mean, you got to be careful who you trust. You got to be careful who you're trying to engage with, I think. And you got to be really careful of, you know, um, what kind of games you're playing with people and stuff like that. It's just, it's cutthroat out here these days, I think. It really is. Watch your percentages, yeah. boys. <laughs> and I don't, oh, well, I better get 5% at least. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't think it's, I don't think they do it maliciously, like the people that ask questions in your stream. But it's definitely, I'll definitely tell you who it is. It's the same people that, like, who you don't really see in your stream like super often, mm -hmm. but like if you got a normal or a higher than normal view count, like they you sure you sure know that they're one of the ones to pop in and like kind of see what's going on. Yes, you know? dude. Yep. Uh, it's Why those people that? ask the questions, but like they don't really. I don't know. I don't think it's malicious all the time though. Yeah, I say it's definitely not malicious. It's just kind of like they see you've kind of like almost made it in a sense. Yeah. Is that is that like, kind of oh. a good representation of it? Or people are like, oh, what's Christian's got like 50 viewers today? What's he doing or whatever? And then like, um, 
they'll go in and that's the really the only times you'll see them in your chat or like say, say anything in your chat. Maybe if you, I don't know if you guys keep your chat window open, you'll see who's like actually there watching. I can't be bothered with that. I don't give a shit. But um, some people do that and like. Every now and then, people will rarely chat, only see whenever you're, like, doing better or, like, you're good at trying mm. to figure out, like, oh, what's this guy doing, you know? But, like, again, I don't think they have any malicious thoughts against you, per se, but they just want to... Be in on know, the come up? Yeah, does, that, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, like, like, oh, maybe I could do that, too, you know, or... Right. Be a part of the process, I guess. Mm hmm Hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. It's a job that you couldn't train for enough, man. That's that's how I like to describe this. Yeah, you can't compare it to Twitch to anything at all. There's like nothing you can compare it to when it comes to like uh the the way in or like the the way to get partnered, the road. Oof. It's all gonna be case by case. No one got the, to where they are the same way. Like it's all different in a lot of ways. Unless you get into an organization, that's about it. That's true. Which is a whole nother thing that we've probably hinted at or talked about before, but yeah, it's, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, I don't try to worry about the numbers too much. I'm pretty content with my community that I've built from the ground up since I started. And you know, a lot of people, you know, you're, you're, your main supporters are going to support you from the beginning to the end most of the time. Um, I think that's really important to focus on those people. I think I've said this a couple times on the podcast in the past, but uh, uh, Dan's Gaming, an OG, true OG of Justin TV and Switch, did a Reddit post a long time ago about this. But it, basically it was, to summarize it up, <clears throat> it was he was basically saying for the people that are in your streams all the time focus on those people and those people only because those are going to be the the rider dies worry yep. about new people coming into the stream when you start to see growth but still focus on those people that you know give you the light of day it's, it's a good way of thinking about it <clears throat> yeah absolutely definitely build that community it's important i think like, uh a whole lot better that i way think versus... building a community hey, johnny yeah, right, dude. I think building a community is more important than attaining partnership. I I really do think that. Yeah, Without a doubt. Those Without those are the doubt. people that'll keep you afloat when times. Did you see the the uh, mm -hmm. Instagram model? The uh, I hate this word that they use, influencer, if you will. <laughs> that uh, head over <clears throat> like two million followers on Instagram or some shit, and she could only sell like thirty six shirts. Wait, like, so they were all fake? Yeah. Or no, they're not fake. They just she couldn't sell, bro. I no, like or I saw. I think I could recently. sell thirty six shirts, and not to be That's that guy, saying, but like, I think I could sell thirty shirts. Honestly, I remember back when I put <laughs> shirts on like Teespring, you know, and I was like, I was like, fuck, I gotta hit twenty five sells, like for the for them to ship. Like I was like, mm -hmm. I had to buy three yeah. shirts. You know, that's what I feel like she's doing. I'm like, dude, but yeah, these days I was like, okay, yeah, cool. There it is, boys. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That. Like I made merch not too long ago. Imagine just, just for shits and giggles. A, yeah, imagine and, the kind of pull you can have with having a 2 million follower Instagram account. Holy fuck, dude. You could... Oh, man. Mm -hmm. It'd be nuts. What were you saying, I Sparky? Wish I, I wish... I, I say I made some, like, bullshit merch that just, like, it's, like, a total ripoff of the Supreme logo, right? And right. It has my logo. And, like, People send me snaps and I'm wearing it. I'm like, what the fuck? Why did you buy that? Like, no, like, you're not supposed to buy <laughs> it's that. It's a community like, it's baby supporting. I don't care if it says Young Spark on it and it looks exactly like Supreme. I'm buying it because I can. And you can't stop I, me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> speaking of, I made a, I let a, some of my, uh, or my most valuable supporter, my highest supporter, I let him draw my emote. My last email because I couldn't think of anything. Throw the emotes on. <laughs> That's a good and idea, actually. Check out this uh, Let's beautiful see PC drew. And... Oh god! Wait, I don't have it. Oh wait. Oh. I, I... Where is it? I have I it somewhere. It. I, there I it is. It <laughs> I drew that dude. Look at it. <laughs> There is that is. a Bible thump? Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, dude. That is awesome. I don't even know like the actual word for it. I let him pick it up too. I can't even like, type it if I want. Dude, get it tattooed. There you go. Oh, no. oh, Let's no. see it. Code Sparky three thump. <laughs> okay, <I'm sorry. laughs> right on the thigh, dude. <laughs>
Oh, that's awesome, though. <clears throat> no, I mean, just from watching you a lot, there it is, a lot, Chris, the, um, your community's awesome when it comes to that stuff. Like, whether it's, uh, like, even the little gambling things, um, that, like, they do the little gambling things against each other, and, like, mm. people are, I mean, tossing bands down for this stuff, it, and it's awesome to see. But at the same time, it's just all it's all out of love, too. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's for the fun of the stream and it's for the love. And and, you know, just because you provide that sort of community feel. I mean, that's what it's all about. Um, Can I get an F in chat for marbles on stream? I haven't seen anybody play that game. In what are you talking about? <laughs> I literally haven't. seen. <laughs> no, no, I've, play it. I've never played it on no, stream, bro. if that's what, what you're happened, saying, dude. I thought I thought that thing was like gonna stick around for a long time. <laughs> I just used it to let decide what I play, like so it does. Should I mention I don't know what marbles is now or like <laughs> Dave's looking it up as we speak. Like, like, it's it's like a game you just playing it. Like you would just like, type in the so, chat and so like, would, explain like marbles. 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 Okay, <laughs> Ryan, you know? explain your sarcasm here so people kind of understand. <laughs> it's basically everybody in ta in chat just says like exclamation point enter or whatever and it puts your name into a game with a bunch of marbles and they go down a racetrack and then at the end is the winner gets to choose like whatever gets to, gets to win something or chooses the streamers game or whatever but, but a lot were, of people just sit people in the section it. yeah people were literally using <laughs> it just for shits and giggles <laughs> so it was a. It was literally like yeah. I would go to everyone's stream and they would play it thirty minutes in or something. <laughs> it's a good community game though. I will right, say. it's people involved, gets people talking. It's just those people that it's kind of like a cop out game, you know, or like um, I'm trying to think of another one. I don't. Even, I don't even think there is really another one. <laughs> like like people that will just sit in there for hours, you know. It's just like, okay. Are you talking about just chatting? Is that what you're talking about? I would never, ever. <laughs> how dare you? I would never go into the just chatting section and sit there and watch YouTube videos. I do it all the time. I what know you, you do. I do it all the time, too. <laughs> but sometimes you need a little break, you know? You can't just be ruthlessly competing in the online gaming community, as our boy Doc would yeah. say, you know, 24-7. Sometimes it's like Shaking nice Shaking from gold Nova clutches and Dude. CS. Oh god, you matted that guy earlier. You were on default on Mirage, and you may or may not have whiffed a couple shots before, but whew, you did a <laughs> nice flick right? 180 and just oh <laughs> I my both I was like uninstall. <laughs> I typed uninstall in all chat to that other guy. I was like, oh my lord. <laughs> I saw someone who had the name uninstall on League and I was like, oh cool, cool dude. <laughs> That's one game I've never gotten into. I don't know why. Don't, don't I've ever got no interest for it. Fucking horrendous. Played 17 minutes of it, I think, maybe. What game? Sorry. League, League. of Legends. I, oh, I might yeah. get back into HOTS, dude. I was loving that game. What, hey, what you, you mean? So bad. Okay, I'm not going to shit on HOTS. But, or I'm going to shit on HOTS. I'm sorry. <laughs> you but I shit on HOTS every single oh, day. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I literally so make fun today of how bad the game had is more something. viewers than any HOTS tournament ever had in the history of HOTS. Wait, say that again? Soda himself alone today had more viewers like in this dueling tournament than HOTS ever had in any tournament I believe Hots. it. Dude, their like, major events, the major events for HOTS got like 18 to 20 K. Like, that's what I'm saying. I think, like, I think he had... I really? think he had more wow. play or he had more viewers than Hot's ever had players. <laughs> but what's weird is like um I really I didn't see many like people twice when playing Hot's. I probably did, but I didn't know. Um but like there was a good amount of people when I was playing for a while and then it just ever since they canceled the esports of it, it just dropped so right. much. But I do like the character. I think the character designs and the idea of yeah, I like, like, the, I like the, the idea of it. The concept. I think the idea of your whole team leveling together is really uh, smart. I don't know I, that one. That, I mean, that's that's the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Like the whole, I just I just feel like like my individual self mattered. So oh, kind of like oh, fuck. I could make arguments for that all day because you can make some clutch plays in that game, dude. I played Jaina. Oh. 
Better watch out for my icicles. Uh, I, I, I don't fuck with some <laughs> Jaina, some, some ice maid. I know what you're talking about, her. She a bad bitch. I'm I just I'm yeah. too <laughs> dedicated to my original game, man. That's like people who started in Dota or people who started in Hots or League, you know. I've been playing League of Legends since I was a junior in high school. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I just I don't I don't know anything different really. I've played Hots. I've played ranked Hots with Ryan a couple times. I enjoyed myself, but I always go back to league. I played league the other day with my friends and I'm hot garbage. I'm a terrible player, but I ended up just going back to it just cause it's all I know. At least for MOBAs, it's all I know. Yeah, I, I used to play league. I actually played it a lot for a long time. Um, and uh, I think the same thing with Overwatch. I think the community pushed me away from really wanting to like- That's why I only play with friends, my dude. I can't- Wanting to hit like high rank and stuff like that. It's pushed me away a lot because I actually was playing it a, a good chunk and I was I was pretty good at it. I was playing top and jung and- Oh, just, I wish I knew how I to know, play the game I, anymore. I just got pushed away from it. People just got too toxic, too many throwers, you know. I think we could have fun. I think if me, you, and Spark one day memed it up, dude. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> come on. Pass. The only reason I'm even playing now is so I can get good enough so I can fucking flame people. That's the only reason I'm That's playing. it? <laughs> so I can feel like I'm good enough to where I can just go in on people. I mean, that's kind of what I do anyway, but I'm not good enough to justify it, you know? I'm just kinda right. Like, it, it's like, <laughs> well, you're 0-4, buddy. You know, they could come back with that. <laughs> like... Back but uh, nah, my, my friend, uh, our critic, Hale, Josh, the one that we usually he's often, nutty. Um, he's or I mean, they all come everyone I play with. We all come from the Night Blue 3 community because they're all usually moderators in there. So they actually play League. I, I only got it like got in that community like by a friend of a friend association. You know? But uh, whenever he tried to make the switch to Fortnite, or, or, you know, I was his Fortnite buddy. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but even then, no, he's stupid good. So like. But he usually calls me like a dude. Like, dude, you're such a diva to play with. Like, I can't handle. Because <laughs> I'm like, dude, handle like, your own, like, bud. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like everyone. Just everything needs to go right. Why? Why are you not doing this for me? Why are you not doing this? Like, I'm just bitching, just a bitch at that point. <laughs> yeah. It's I don't know. I I always just find myself going back to that. Um, back to that game, man. I really do. Like straight up, I just. I don't know. I don't know any better. It was my first PC game in general. I like snuck on my mom's laptop, <laughs> played it at 25 FPS. I think I, I only played Olaf top that, that was back in season, psh, probably season two or, or three or something like that. And I don't know, man, ever, ever since then, like if I am going to play a MOBA, I'm usually going to play that, but mm. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's just all personal preference. I think with playing with the right people definitely makes a difference, though. I mean, oh, it, sure. it makes the game, make I it. think. It makes it so much more funner. But, I mean, I feel like that could also be said with generally any game, like even Counter-Strike. Like, oh, dude, like if I were to go into fucking solos and like start grinding, I'd be miserable. But like if I'm playing with like, you know, the boys or whatever, and like it's not super serious, but we're still kind of competitive. Like right. it's a bit funner. Like, you know, like True. if I'm I can agree, like. If I'm giving like if I'm giving Izzy shit because he can't hold down like banana or whatever, <laughs> it, it makes like, me oh. want to play better though, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like <laughs> I agree. But it's just the banter. I guess maybe that's my own personal. I appreciate the banter. Like, yeah, cool, give me some sass, you know. Like, give me some shit. Tell me I'm not. Well, that I mean, that that's when you're playing with the right people, I think. Because me and Dave do it all the time in CS. I mean, yeah, like. I'll I'll right. I'll throw a Run trash me just through the middle of mid and I'll no scope midair. Let's yep. do it. Yep. And then I'll I'll mess up the run boost. He's like, come on. Like or or I'll I'll throw a flash. Or or for instance earlier, Drock like flashed us like the whole team as we're going out ramp. And then I and he does that, so I miss the nade. It comes back, almost kills like two guys on the team. Mm -hmm. Just stuff like that. I'm like, oh no. It's I don't know. It's it's the moments that make you know, playing those more competitive games with your friends, I think worth it in the end. It's just, oh, yeah. It's just way more enjoyable that way, I think. Like, I had a great time on CS today. I couldn't even hear the game oh, sound because we were so loud. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it like was a what great I prefer time. every time. See, that's, that's the beauty of it, though. That's why I played it so much back in the day, because we would always have a 5Q. You know, we would always sit yeah, down... Yeah. And we were good at the game. I think most of us were pretty good at the game back then. I mean, we would play it six, seven hours a day. I mean, I'd hope we'd be halfway decent. I got 
really into it at one point so i had to actually make like a separate account because i was playing so much of it and i was a high rank but it was still fun i would i had i had 500 hours on my alt account that's how much i enjoyed playing with my friends literally and it's just it's just crazy i think that's with any game though you know not just competitive games but i think any game with with the right people <clears throat> is it, it's just the way to go i think whether it's a crappy game or not. Even crappy games, dude. Those, those are funny. <laughs> oh, what was that Xbox game? Happy Wars? Do you remember oh that, Ryan? Oh my do, gosh, dude. do I. <laughs> yeah. Holy that crap. Was lit, dude. That was so good. I don't even know what that is. I thought you were going to bring up the old Xbox One demo disc, Fusion Frenzy, dude. Oh my god, I got a clip on my YouTube of me getting a 7-in-1 lightning bolt on Happy Wars. Dude, that game was <laughs> fun. I liked that game a lot. It was so good. It was like you can you could basically do abilities with your team if you set up. And like for there's like a warrior class and you can make this like uh, a triangle shape. And it's like a Spartan, and you just charge forward all together as seven people and just destroy everybody. Um, but most people wouldn't freaking do it. They would just stand there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> If yeah, you that, did get that, it built on. <laughs> yeah. It was fun, though. That was a fun game. It was a free game, too. A like, lot of those games were free, weren't they? Now that I think yeah. about it. There was like free this. indie games. Yeah, dude. Some Small of those indie, indie games. It's just a small indie company, by the way, you know. Am I Riot? Yeah. <laughs> Riot, Blizzard, you know, stuff like yeah. that. You know, l little things. Yeah, just the little ones. Right. Can you play this Happy Wars game on PC, dude? Holy shiz. We might no. go pro league. Boys. Dude, we go in. <laughs> Yo, Is there a competitive scene? Dude, hold on. Look here. <laughs> here, here check, check that link out in the Discord. Dude. That's hilarious. Imagine if we go on to uh, Twitch and there's like a 200,000 viewer tournament pro league going on. Oh my All lord. Right. That's actually hilarious, team. dude. No, but let's like some of the, dominate the ladders. We we, right. we talk about the free games, the small indie games, the simple games. I mean that we're correlating right back to what we started with with Call of Duty, man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I want to see it succeed. I want to see it be simple. But at the same time, do you think that's going to fix it, man? Do you really think that's going to fix it for a lot of people? I mean, us, I think our generation, us millennials, we'll call us, we're getting older, man. We're getting older. Do you think that simplicity is going to have a, a longevity effect? I mean, it could work for World of Warcraft or vanilla World of Warcraft. Would it, would it necessarily work for Call of Duty? I think for me personally, it does. Like, I think so. I'm talking I as a majority, though, do you think? Call of Duty, I have not been excited for something until remastered. Modern Warfare Remastered. I mean, think a lot of people were really, really excited about it. I, I mean, still have zero seconds played on that other piece of shit game that came with it. The Whatever it was Infinite called. Warfare? I have yeah. a total Dude, of 10 hours on it. I think might as well it. just be a coaster because it's useless. Oh, Dude, yeah. it's... Literally that was tough. That was a tough purchase, but the only thing that sold me was <laughs> was remastered, dude. And I played yeah, the really? shiz out of that. I think I prestiged four or five times uh, in remastered alone. I played countless amount of GPs too. I think I got the top yeah. top page on that within the first couple weeks. It was it was a good I time. I love the two v two and COD remastered. Oh man, that was really fun. M16 pissed me the fuck off because that was the one thing that turned me away from tournaments and ladders because yep. they wouldn't ban the M16 and it just wasn't the same as the old one. But neither were the servers, the tick rates, the frame rate. You know, you got to put those things into I factor. I used the 74U. Yeah. That and I dang never rips, was, dude. You I can was still like, be good with that. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm not gonna fall into that M16 thing. I'm not doing it. I'll do 74U forever. Fuck the M16. That shit's too easy. Right. And just broken. I mean, even when I got killed by that dude, I was so mad. I was like, this is just stupid. I honestly don't know if I've used like another gun other than a sniper on uh, remastered. I mean, um, unless I picked it up. <laughs> right. That's my my thing. I mean, the snipers even felt a little different. Just a little bit. Yeah, oh, they were they were definitely. I think they killed 100%. faster, but I mean that could just be. Me not playing uh, the original one in a while, or for a while, I, I should know. say. 
feel like the Barrett was a little faster, but I'm not sure about the M40. I feel like I saw people getting plus 35 stacks back in the day like nothing. Well, I mean, not nothing, but... <laughs> right. Oops. Well, boys, um... Wow, that was a the fast two hours, I will say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we covered a heck of a lot. There was a lot to talk about this week. I mean, just uh, kind of skimming over the stuff, you know, the, the drama going on with Twitch and, and stuff like that. Uh, the whole I think we did a really good bit on the the whole quitting, quitting uh, school or work for for, uh, you know, full time content creation it's a really important thing that i think people need to be talking about on a consistent basis especially with how um you know more relevant it's becoming i think it, we did a good job on that um but yeah i mean anything any any closing points really i mean i think we covered most of it nothing much nothing that comes to mind for me no so dave what'd you think man this is your first is this your first podcast you've been on yeah it's my first ever <laughs> what'd you think man in all honesty I think it was good you enjoy I think yourself that I, I did actually but i think i need to prepare better next time mm -hmm. because i woke up way too early today <laughs> <laughs> yeah a little tired <laughs> i'm exhausted I, I, but, I couldn't tell to be honest but i think you did a good job man we appreciate you coming on um obviously you know uh D dave will be a more on call type of guy here whether he's on here every week or um, every other week or whenever he can fill in uh, since Jager ended up taking a little bit of a leave from, uh, you know, Sundays and stuff like that. Um, Dave will definitely be filling in here a lot more and he's more than welcome. He's a good friend of ours. And I think he's got some good points and opinions on a lot of the stuff we talk about. So, um, yeah. Uh, by the way, Fresh Topics podcast, if anyone's still lurking in here. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt the conversations, but thank you so much for the host. If anyone was in here following the stream and hanging out here for a bit, we appreciate that very much. Um, usually our podcast is live by 6 o'clock Central Standard Time every Sunday. So be prepared uh, each Sunday. Sometimes we might be going a little bit earlier, depending on everyone's situation here uh, on the show. Um, but we do appreciate it very much. Um, otherwise... Thanks for tuning in. We hope you guys did enjoy the show. We appreciate everyone hanging out, anyone following the show, the podcast, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see you guys next week around 6 o'clock Central. Stay updated on Twitter and all that good stuff. Follow us down below on our borders. Check out Dave as well. Maybe we'll see a fishing stream from him. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Dirty Dave. H hitting some lunkers <laughs> out there in uh, good old good old East Coast, you know. But, uh oh, yeah. Yeah, go check that. Check out the boys. Uh, we'll be streaming some WoW. Hopefully, I don't know if, if the stress test is gonna end up you doing some get more on stuff. Retail too, I'll be I'll man. be getting on retail. I've been enjoying it. I've been Dave enjoying it. The fuck up. Yeah, he did. To an eye level in You're days. just a hardcore gamer, all right. I'm enjoying my <laughs> shooters right now, to be honest. Otherwise, I'd be playing WoW and ESO. My lads got me back into ESO as well, so I'm like multi MMOing right now, and I'm loving every bit of it. We'll get you in there. We I think we might get a, a high key for we you. We will. Hey, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. I'm my guy. I'm my guy. <laughs> All right, dudes. Um, we're going to wrap it up here. Thank you. Seriously, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, check us out every week uh, on Sunday, 6 o'clock Central. If a little earlier, check us out on Twitter. We're always tweeting about it. We do plan on getting the podcast out on Spotify and iTunes in the next coming weeks. So, again, stay updated on all, on all that information. We'll be letting everybody know when it goes live so you guys can listen to it on the go instead of trying to find it on Twitch. It can be kind of a mess and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, check out everyone. Twitter handles down below. Our Twitches are always uh, pretty easily accessible from uh, our Twitters and whatnot. But, yeah, dudes, have a good one. Thank you for chilling. Thank you for hanging out, chit-chatting, having the good convos. And we will see you guys next week for the next episode of the Boardless Podcast. Peace out. See you.